Hi everyone, this is Jen Rogers with Art with Jen, and today I'm going to show you how I paint this cute little Valentine's gnome. I'm going to start with the background of gray. If you don't have gray, you can use white and black and mix that together. You're going to want a little less black than white. If you want to lighten your gray, you can use white to do that as well. You can always use white to lighten any of your colors. I'm also going to do a little bit of blue, uh, like a sky blue over the gray. So you can see that. And I'm getting these out here. What I started with is I just hand drew this on. And then I traced over it with a marker. Uh, sharpie type marker and the reason I did that is I wanted a general sense of where everything was and the sharpie marker will show through my first layer of paint so I can see where I want to paint everything so I'm using a bigger brush just to do the background we're going to start with doing the gray and it's a little darker so I'll probably lighten that up a little bit um, but the sharpie ha helps me when I paint over it I can still see where all my lines are so I can then trace and, and do my outlining and stuff like that. If you don't do the Sharpie when you paint over it, you may not be able to see the lines if it's just in a pencil. So that's why I like to do the Sharpie. I don't always do that, but when I'm painting something, especially the background, I'm gonna paint the gray over the hearts and then come back in. See, I'm lightening that up. And I think I like that better. I don't want it too, too dark. And I'm gonna come back in with blue too and lighten it up. I just wanted to a gray base. And all I'm doing is just kind of going along the lines. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it because we're going to be coming back in and lining it and doing different colors. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just, I'm just getting it all in there. And I'm going to speed this up in a minute. Oh, I did want to say if I, I just hand drew this, so I did not have a tracer um, for you guys to trace on yours yet but if you want one just drop a comment below and let me know and I will make a tracer this weekend and get you guys the link for that so just let me know if you want a tracer and I'll do one okay I'm going to speed this up because you don't really need to watch me doing the whole background and then I will come back Now that the gray is all on there, I'm gonna start doing his hat and I'm gonna do a teal. So I have a small angled brush that I'm using to do the teal. And I'm doing it, I'm gonna line it, but I'm gonna do in kind of a downward stroke. You can paint it however you want, but I'm gonna do the edge of my brush, so, so the tip of my brush in downward strokes for the most part. So I kind of want to get kind of a pattern on his hat so that it kind of gives it a little bit of texture. You could just paint normal if you want. I'm gonna end up putting some dots on the hat as well, so that will give it a little bit more interest too. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna blend a little bit of white and, and kind of shade it a little bit just to give it a little bit of texture as well. So see, I'm putting a little bit of whites in there, and as you can kind of see, I'm kind of coming down with the edge of my brush just to give it a little bit of texture and interest. So I'm going to continue to do this and then I will be back in the next part. Okay, now that the hat's all done, I'm gonna to start to fill in here on his beard. And I'm using some white and gray. It's gonna be a light gray. And I'm going to come back in after that dries with some more white. And I'll show you how that kind of will give the beard some texture and different colors through it. But right now we're doing a really light gray on here. Uh, hopefully you can kind of see also what I did with the hat, the texture that's with the hat. I have kind of the vertical lines coming down the way that I painted, and then I did kind of a horizontal across um, the, the rim of his hat, and it kind of makes it 
just have a little bit more texture and visual interest. So we're just gonna continue to fill in his beard. And again, it's just a light gray, and I know right now it looks a little bit strange against the, uh, <laughs> the gray background, but it will all work out because I'm gonna, like I said, put some white over it um, after it dries, and I'm also going to add some blue, light sky blue to the background so everything will will kind of blend in really nicely. So I'm gonna speed this up while I finish filling in the beard. With the first layer of the beard done, I'm going to now go back in with some light sky blue on the background. And I want some of the gray to show through. And so I have a three quarters inch brush, excuse me, that I'm just kind of sweeping it over and I'm gonna go back and forth. It's gonna be mainly blue, but I want some of the gray to show through. And I have some white in there to kind of give it a little bit more texture and color variation. So it's the blue and some white and then the gray will show through. After I do that, after I get do, done doing that all around, I'm gonna go in with some uh, ultramarine blue and fill in his uh, body. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna speed through that just so that to save some time for you so that's not super long video, but um, I do want to note that when I do switch to the ultramarine blue, I am gonna use a much smaller brush. You can use a flat head brush, but something small to get in the there. I I I think I ended up using an angle brush when I did do it, but you can you can use a small flat head as well and that way it's a lot easier to get in and around everything and paint in there. So I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to watch this whole thing. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of white on the pom-pom on his hat and then move to doing his nose and his hands. Uh, I'm using just a smaller uh, angled brush. I, I tend to like the angled brushes. I know I say that <laughs> sometimes, but I, I do. I put in a pretty thick coat on the white here and just kind of filling that in. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's just a little hat pom-pom. Um, I hope that you guys like me speeding up the parts where I'm painting and it's going to take a long time. My goal with these videos is to make them all under 30 minutes whenever possible. I know that everybody is busy. So what I do is I speed up that time just a little bit um, so that you could see everything that I'm doing, but it's not taking you know quite as long you don't really need to watch paint dry <laughs> that's my thought anyways so now i have the heart there you can still see through that and we are going to start to fill in his nose and his hands now i actually have a flesh color paint that acrylic craft paint that i have but if you don't you could use a pink you could lighten it with some white if you need to. Um, so you, you know, pink, pink is fine. And I'm just filling that in. I'll be doing the nose and the hands all in the same color. Now I'm just gonna quickly fill in the shoes down here with some black so they have a, a chance to dry before I put in my little white highlights. I kind of try and plan what I'm painting out 
um, so that I give certain spots a chance to dry in between. So I'll come back to another area that I'm going to put another coat on or a highlight to. Uh, so you kind of got to think about it while you're, while you're painting. Okay, what do I want to do next? You can also always use like a hair dryer. I have a heat gun, but those can be a little hot. A hair dryer to just dry something faster or obviously wait and then come back and, and paint when it's dry. So those are a couple options. But if you want to just keep continuously painting, uh, that, that's really the best strategy. And you'll, you'll get better at it as you, as you go to figure out, okay, what's going to dry? What can I move to next? And it's pretty pretty simple to do. So we're just going to finish out his little feet. I don't know why I'm taking so long to paint these guys. And then I am going to move to doing some dots on his hat. I'm going to do a magenta on his hat. I tend to like teals, blues, and magenta <laughs> a lot. I don't know. It's been kind of my, my thing lately. I When I did the Cup of Love, I did magenta and teal as well. But I'm... I do like greens a lot too, but for some reason lately I have been tending to use a lot of blues and teals and then magenta instead of a red. I, I like the richness in the color. So you you can make pretty much any color that you need if you have the basic primary colors and you know have a, a black and a white. You can mix and match and make light colors. So you don't need to buy a whole bunch of different colors in the beginning. I like to have different colors, but that's just me. So now we're gonna go and do the dots on the hat. So for the dots, the magenta that I have is a craft, is not a craft paint. It's one of the artist grade paints but they're all still pretty cheap. You can get them at Michael's Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics, or whatever your local craft store is. And when I'm doing this, I'm using a, a round brush for this, a smaller round brush. And basically I just put my brush down and just circle my, my hand around. And you can make circles as big as and, and as small as you want. Now these aren't perfect circles, and I really don't want them to be. I want the hat to be kind of, you know, um, different. I don't know. <laughs> Not it, They don't have to be perfect. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of these on this hat. I think I'll do, I, I was debating whether I want to do some on his um, brim, but I think I'll do a few on there as well. So I'm just going to speed that up while I do these and you can watch how I do them. Now it's time to fill in the hearts. I'm gonna do this first small one with a pink. And I'm doing a mixture of a light pink and the magenta. I don't want it too, too bright, but I don't want it like super baby because I want it to show baby pink. I want it to show up a little bit against the sky. So I'm doing a little bit of a mixture here. And you can see how I did on the hat. I only did a few dots on the brim and I did it, you know, a little bit smaller. And I could have left those without any dots. I'm not sure if I like how many dots I did, but it's done now. If I really didn't like it, I could just wait for it to dry, paint over the hat and redo those. So don't ever be afraid to redo something that you don't love. Uh, you just need to, you might need a couple coats if, if it's a darker color, but you, with acrylic paints, it's really, really easy to fix or change something that you don't like. So I'm just going to fill that one in. Hearts are really easy. I did draw these out, but I don't really have a very hard time painting them. I like painting hearts, um, and they don't have to be perfect and hearts are all different shapes. So if you get, I know I've recommended before, but um, a mixed media pad, you can get those on Amazon and any of the craft stores as well, and practice. So you don't need to buy a whole bunch of canvases to do uh, paintings on. If you do the mixed media pads, you can, first of all, take a couple pages to just practice hearts and dots and, you know, whatever you want to. Um, I have the tree tutorial and 
a quick snowflake tutorial. I do a whole bunch of different type of trees, but I did some basic ones in there. And you can practice that type of stuff on there, and it's really cheap. The, the pad that I got on Amazon, I got a two-pack, and it was like 60, and it was a big one. It was like 60 pages each. So you can definitely do that. Uh, okay, now I'm going to do this this heart. And this one's kind of off the page a little because I wanted to make it kind of just floating off. And so I'm doing this one purple. It's a deep, deep purple. And this, again, is um, an artist color, but you can, I have other purples too. I just liked this, this deep color for this one just to have um, something a little bit different. But anyways, to get back to the um, multimedia pads. I would definitely suggest that if you're new to painting. You can paint a full painting on those too and they rip out and you could just frame it. So that's kind of fun too. So if you find that you paint something that you really like and you want to hang it, just rip it out and you can you can put that in a frame. No problem. Um, canvases are pretty cheap. I get most of mine at Michael's because I really find that they really pretty much have the best deal on, on canvases for the most part. Um, so I do get big packs from Michaels. This one again is a 11 by 14. I've been painting a lot of 11 by 14s lately, but I do also do a lot of 16 by 20s. Those are really nice to hang. And some 12 by 12. 12 by 12s are nice because you could do a couple paintings and group them together um, pretty easy with those. So here we are just finishing that off. And we'll let that dry. Some of these, these colors have been doing pretty well. Sometimes you might have to come back and do a second coat on a color, especially a darker color if it's not covering too well. So don't, don't worry if it's not covering completely. Let it dry because the more paint you put on, sometimes it doesn't really help. If it's not going to cover completely, you got to let it dry and then come back and do, the, do a second coat. Uh, now I'm going to just do a couple of little um, highlights of where I'll probably come back over in white, but the paint that I have now, right now, I'm just going to try and place where I think I might want to kind of put a little highlight there and just do in a little curve. And then I'm going to come back, do another coat on my pom-pom and fill in some snow down at the bottom of his feet. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to speed that up. Now I'm just going to come in and do a second coat of white on the pom-pom on the hat because it just needs to have a little bit more. It filled in pretty good, but uh, you can't tell it, I don't think, from the video, but it definitely needed another coat. After that, I am going to start filling in the beard with some more white like I said I was going to do. And I'm just going to kind of follow the lines that I already created doing using the edge of my brush and dragging down. I did that with the gray as well and pretty soon it will kind of look kind of cool. It will have uh, the white and the gray color variation and a little bit more texture to it. And after we're done with that, I'm going to end up doing some lining. So I like to line my whimsical paintings with black most of the time. So what I do is take a very, very, very thin liner brush and we end up lining all around the edge of the painting. So we're gonna do that in just a minute when we're done with this. If, if you enjoy these paintings and you want to see more, uh, make sure that you've liked my page and are following it, and you should be able to get the notifications of when I post more videos. I try not to post more than one thing a day, so it's not like you're gonna get a whole bunch of post for me. It's not a whole bunch of salesy things. Um, most of the time it's either tips or tutorials or questions or that type of stuff. So you're not going to be bombarded by a whole bunch of garbage for me. <laughs> I don't like it. So I don't like to do it to people. That's why I try and keep these videos short and to the point so that it's a little bit easier for people to get through. So now I'm going to 
use my liner brush to just outline very lightly with black and I just get a little teeny 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 bit of paint on there. You can always add more but it's a little bit more tricky to take well you can't really take it away but then you just have to correct it and paint over it or else you have a thicker line so just be careful and don't do too 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 much now here i got doing my line and here let me put a little bit of extra paint on it and kind of show you how that kind of goes oh i didn't do enough so if you do a little too much, it might just be a thicker line. And, and if you do that, you can just come back in later and kind of correct that with some more white or gray like on here or whatever color you're painting over. But you can kind of see that's a little thicker than I probably would typically want it to be. So I'll probably come back in there and just do a little bit of correction on that after. But just really light. And if it's not consistent, I don't mind if it's not consistent in every spot. Um, I kind of like the variation. It's just really, I do this mainly on my whimsical paintings. I think it just highlights them and I liked, I like the look of it, but you don't have to do it if it's not a look that you're really into. Um, I do have certain brushes that I like a lot and this is a master touch brush. It's a liner brush that I really like. I have probably about four or five different master touch brushes. I have a larger one and a round one, and they are definitely my favorite brushes. You can't get them everywhere. You can't get them on Amazon, I know. At least you didn't used to be able to. You can get them at Michael's, I believe, and Hobby Lobby. You can definitely get them at Jerry's Artorama. It probably... Uh, a couple of the other online art stores have them too, but I'm not 100% sure, so you'd have to look. But Master Touch, they're a little bit more expensive, but if you're going to be painting a lot, sometimes having a couple of brushes that are, you know, a little more expensive that you have more control over is nice. So as you can see where I'm lining, you can see some of the spots I did that I kind of came in a little bit um, just to define the whiskers a little bit more. And you can do that if you want. So I just lined up a little bit more into the beard. I'm going to keep going around. I use this liner brush 90% of the time because I feel like I have the most control with this one. So I do like it. So it for me, the I think it was maybe 4 or $5. And that was definitely worth the investment. I have a lot of different brushes and uh, most of them are are really pretty good. I take care of them and wash them all the time. So they're usually in pretty good shape, but um, there are my favorites. So I definitely would recommend that. So I'm going to finish outlining the whole thing. The beard obviously takes the longest. I'm gonna outline his whole body, the pom-pom, the hat, outline the hearts, and do the line um, for my balloon string. And the balloon string is going to come all the way down to his one hand. And then I am going to, after, at the bottom of his hand, do a V to make the bottom of the string so it looks like he's holding it in his hand. I'm also going to come back in with some white and go over those little heart highlights that I have up there on the top of those balloons. So I'm gonna speed that up so you don't have to watch it in slow motion and I'll be back. Okay, now that all my little highlights are on, I put a couple highlights on the shoes, the hearts, I am gonna use a stencil. So I got this stencil, there was a pack of hearts I got on Amazon, but you, you don't have to use a stencil. You could, you could freehand them, you could draw them in and paint over, you could get little stencils anywhere, they're super cheap. Um, these little, they don't last that long, but 
these are really cute to kind of use. And this one was like a little cutout one. But anyways, um, I am using the Deco Art. I use a Deco Art paint a lot, um, but they're the metallics. So I have a champagne gold and the silver. And I'm just going to stencil those on it. Now with these, with the metallics, these ones are very thin. You just want a teeny, 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 teeny bit of paint on there. So what a good rule of thumb is you get your paint on your little um, dabber there and pouncer. And then you pounce, pounce, pounce on the side. So you pour a little bit on your plate or whatever you're using to hold your paint. Pounce, pounce, pounce. A good rule of thumb is actually 10 pounces, but at least five times pounce it off before you start to stencil, especially on these little skinny stencils, because you will bleed through, especially on paint that's really thin. And you can repair it because with craft or with uh, acrylic paint, you can always come in and do touch up. But if you don't want to have to come in and do a lot of touch up, the easiest thing to do is to pounce it off. You can always put more paint on, but taking the paint off, obviously you have to just go in and correct it. So it's hard to tell, I think, from the video. I'll try and hold it up, but I'm doing different silver and gold. And I am going to just kind of throughout just as a little fun background and I liked having just the little outline of them and not a full filled in heart so I didn't want to make it too busy I wanted to make it kind of fun so I'm going to do that and then I think I'll come back in and highlight the hearts um, I end up doing this in the silver and gold but I didn't really love all of them so I, I did a little correction on a couple of them and then came back in with a metallic pink um, to do a couple of the highlights. So I'm gonna fast forward that because this is gonna take a little while so you can kind of see though what I did. And when you see me painting over the blue, it's just me correcting one that I just didn't love. And like I said, you can come in and paint over and correct stuff that you don't like. And there you have it, the Valentine's Gnome. Like and follow me on Facebook and also on Instagram at artwithjen.art and you'll get notifications of when I post some other tutorials. Thanks so much and have a great day.